Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Alec Hassan here. So this episode, I know I say this a bunch of times <laughs> with uh, any episode where I'm trying to do something a little different, but this episode is going to be different. I just wanted to provide a little bit of an update here, um, mainly just to provide some context of what's going on a little bit behind the scenes with uh, with my ministry, basically what I, how I'm trying to run things online. And as you can tell by the title, yeah, things are going to be changing. Um, Although, and it's kind of clickbaity, you know, I'm not, I'm not giving up on what I'm doing online. You know, I still feel very much uh, called, you know, in a sense, at least how I would put it. I definitely feel like God has is continuing, can is continuing to lead me down this path of providing encouragement online, uh, educating people, pointing them in the right direction when it comes to leading a podcast, leading a social media page in a way that can really create a lot of impact in people's lives and also can help them generate income too. But I'm going to be going about it a bit differently. You know, it's mainly, um, you can think of it mainly as it's going to be a rebrand. I know when I had started off, um, like, it's kind of funny, like if you look back on the YouTube channel, like the name for the YouTube, for my YouTube channel has changed and went from the current Christian and now it's digital ministry mastery. And now it's going to be going from digital ministry mastery to, you know, I have some, some working titles that I'm going to be using, but the content started off with me being very focused on encouraging Christian leaders. Um, it was very general, you know, I've made fun, I made jokes about this before about how it was like, like someone, if someone were to be like, oh, describe your, your spouse to me, you know, to, tell me about your fiance. And I'm like, oh, she's a Christian and it's got leadership qualities. You know, people, someone would be like, that's, uh, you know, you might not know your spouse that well, but like, yeah. So anyway, my, uh, the, the YouTube channel with the current Christian, it started off very broad, very generalized. Uh, the niche wasn't super focused. My audience, I didn't really know who exactly I was trying to speak to, but I just felt like God was saying, like, start this. So I was like, amen, I'm going to go and hit the ground running. And I just kind of had faith that, you know, God was going to be leading me each step along the way, which he has. Um, but now it's at a point where I've noticed with Digital Ministry Mastery, um, I've noticed with current Christian, um, my audience, now that it's getting more focused and I'm becoming to be more aware of who I'm, who I'm speaking to, I've noticed that I've put myself in a box with the original intention of helping Christian leaders of, and then of helping, uh, you know, Christian social media pages, you know, and it's ironic, but, you know, because, I felt like God was leading me towards doing this. I thought that my audience was going to be specifically speaking towards Christians. But as I've been talking more and more with people online, um, ironically, trying to target people based on their faith has actually been restricting my ability to actually impact people. And I also, ironically, the people who I thought I needed to help have been very not as receptive as I was expecting and it might just be like, I don't want to label saying Christians online aren't nice or things like that. But I think just through my marketing, through through the, my me, the means by which I've been trying to reach people, using terms like Christian and Christianity, Jesus followers, like using that those terms online, I think the type of people who have been drawn to those terms and the people who are, who see that and super identify with it just so happen to be people who are not interested in what I'm trying to provide them or they're very combative with my with what I'm trying to provide them um, there's a lot there's a there's a there is a culture online of people who uh, say they are faith-based who are very combative and start debates and things online and being someone who's just trying to come into this space to provide a lot of value, especially for at, well, at the time, what I thought was going to be like Christian, uh, Christian leaders who are doing their own online ministries. I thought I was going to come into this space to provide a lot of value and people would be receptive of it. And I'm not 
pivoting because people haven't been receptive. Um, but I've noticed that people uh, who I've spoken with online are very combative against that. And then there's people who don't necessarily identify as Christian, but really enjoy the content that I put out, but they, but they don't, but they're automatically, what's the term? They're, they're automatically counting themselves out as being someone who could be part of my audience because they're like, well, you know, you're trying to talk to Christians and, you know, I do podcasts. I have an online, I have like social media channels online, but I just don't identify as a Christian's thing. And it's kind of, it's, I, it's cut people out in a, in a negative sense. You know, when you're trying to identify your audience, when you're trying to identify your audience, you definitely want to be specific because it both helps people who identify with what you're doing, feel part of what you're doing because it feels inclusive. Like it feels like they're like, yes, this is for specifically me. And if you're trying to provide something that's specifically for someone, it's going to have people that say, okay, you know, this isn't for me. And then they exclude themselves and, you know, they go find their own tribe. But people who very well could be who people who could be like so who could benefit so much from this community that I'm building online are counting themselves out based on things that I don't think are necessary. And it's ironic, but it's like the whole thing of trying to push a Christian audience first. So I know I feel like I've kind of been rambling a bit, but it's something important because, you know, starting off this journey, it was like Christian demographic focused. And now as things are moving along, it's like, I'm kind of like, I'm not, I'm not renouncing anything. I'm not trying to hide anything in terms of like my beliefs and things like that. But by going, by having like my branding and my messaging faith-based first, it's had people who could really benefit from what I'm doing online um, turn away from what I'm doing online. But this doesn't mean I'm not going to talk about the lessons I've learned from reading the Bible. It doesn't mean I'm going to not talk about my experiences that I've had with volunteering at church or doing mission trips, things like that. It just means that I'm going to very much be leaning way more into my, like, into the knowledge and the expertise of doing, of running things online and when there comes moments where I, where there's a good analogy or I can make my point very, made very clear based on just um, historical events based in ancient Israel, then, you know, I'm a, I'm a do that. You know, if there's times where it's like, oh yeah, I just so happen to be like referencing a historical text that uh, called that an ancient culture has been, you know, has had preserved for thousands of years. And it's like, by all means, you know, I'm going to make that analogy. I'm going to make that connection in order to better emphasize the points that I'm trying to make. However, like my goal going into this was never to make people feel like I'm preaching at them. It was never my intention to come to this space and be like, oh yeah, like in order to be successful, you have to, you know, identify as being Christian or a follower of Jesus. And I think there's a lot of people that have been thinking that that's kind of like my, my motive. That's not, uh, not that I don't want people to have a better understanding of who Jesus is, but it's just that the way I've been, the way that I was, that I've seen the church function is that there's a lot of emphasis on evangelical, e evangelicalism. I don't know. I'm not saying that right, but evangelism, there we go. There's a lot of emphasis on evangelism that I've seen in the church. And I've not necessarily felt called to that at all. Because it's it, the way I see it is there's people where it's like, hey, come to church, come to church, come to church. You got to know Jesus, you got to know Jesus. And then people are, you know, they're, oh, yeah, you know, all right, I'm bought on the vision. And then they come in and then it's like, all right, what, like, what's this, what's this next step? And they're like, all right, the next step is to get other people to come here. It's like, really? What? But I thought, no, but I'm here. Like, what's the thing I got to do? And it's like, yeah, what you got to do is get other people to come here, too. And it's like, what? That's kind of, I've never, like, because there's so much more to it than that. Like there's, so my whole thing is, all right, you got all these people coming into this church building, but what are you doing with the people in the building? People forget 
Like they've been so focused on getting people in that once people are in, they're like, well, what do we do with these people now? So that's what, what led me to do in my ministry where it's like, all right, I'm trying to work with people who are already sold on following Jesus. They want to impact the world. They want to do it online, but they don't know how to do it. So here I am trying to help people do that. Um, but I've been starting to see, I'm like, there's people out there who feel called. They may not know that it's, you know, God trying to inspire them to do something. They may not know, they may not have like a personal relationship with like the creator of everything to know that they hardwired them in a certain way to be perceptive of things so that they'll take action on those things. And even though they may not know that, I know it. You know, I'm doing this because I feel like God's called me. And someone else is maybe starting a podcast or starting their own social media page because they feel, they're feeling drawn towards it. There's a reason for, like, they're like, I just know I have to do this. And people who are taking that step are people who I want to work with to help get them to that level where they can make more impact and things like that. Um, but like I've been saying with my branding, it's been turning off the wrong people. Like if I was, if I, it's, if it's something where like, imagine if um, the, t the title of my podcast was making manly businesses, but I'm also like, but I don't want to only work with men. You know, I'm, I want to work with women as well. Then it's like, dude, don't, don't have the title of the podcast making manly businesses. Because anyone who's a woman is going to see that and then be like, oh, that's not for me. I'm not a man. I'm not trying to be manly. And I'm like, well, no, you, don't, you don't have to be manly. You could still, still join us. And they're like, mm, I don't know. That's kind of, it's, it doesn't, it's not resonating. And ironically, that's just what my, the current Christian people are like, what is it? The, they all, the, the, the title didn't have anything specific to let people know that it was anything involving online social media pages or online ministries. So and I was like, oh yeah, digital ministry. Uh, duh, my podcast is named that. I'm gonna change the brand to just digital ministry mastery. But even then, then people are like, well, I'm not running a ministry or my podcast isn't about Christian content. Or you got people who are like, dude, I, oh, man, I love your content. Um, I even, like people have even told me, they're like, I'm atheist, but the way you've like presented some of the stuff, especially some of the biblical things, like I actually learned something like, this was good. And I got something out of it that I can apply to my own podcast. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. But then, but they don't feel welcome because of the labels. And it's nothing that I'm doing personally, but it's just something that comes with having the titles and the branding that's geared towards trying to appeal to Christians. And then the Christians who do see my stuff, there's there's definitely a good percentage of people who, who are followers of Jesus, you know, they're trying to go grow God's kingdom and they're doing these things online and, and they're fantastic people and they're part of this community and I love them. But then there's the people who are like, just trying to start debates. They're not trying, all they want to do is argue online. And it's like, I don't want to appeal to you. You're not the person I'm trying to talk with. You're not the person I want to work with. Um, and then the people who I do want to work with are excluding themselves because they're like, they're not identifying with the labels. And I would much rather, I'd much rather create something super impactful and be unashamed when I bring it up my beliefs and just let people like, I'd rather have someone come in, they're getting lots of value. And then as they're learning about me, they just so happen to learn that, oh yeah, this guy reads the Bible. He's a follower of Jesus. And he's just a solid dude. Like that's before they even get any stigmas with their own past experiences of people that they've encountered in their life who claim to have this label of being a follower of Jesus, but are then who, but then have are acting in ways that are contradictory to what it means to follow Jesus. Like I don't want those stigmas to be associated. I'd rather just like, I'd rather serve I'd rather provide a lot of value up front. And then as people are getting to know, like, and trust me, especially as they get to know me, then they're like, oh yeah, this, you know, this dude's a different type of like Jesus guy. He's a different type of Jesus dude. And I can get behind that. And then 
as I'm provide like I know so <laughs> I've got so I love stories you know that I love stories and as I'm providing different stories and things and doing different analogies for stuff it'll some of them are just going to happen to be related to different you know biblical parables because that's part of my life that's who I am and if me sharing that helps to get a message across more easily then it's like I'm going to do that um but yeah, so there, there's going to be a transition, transitional period of changing the names for a lot of different social media accounts, um, trying to discern what would be best of, do I start from scratch with different things? Like with this podcast, do I just change the name and dump everything into a season zero uh, that I've done prior? Or, you know, it's, there's a lot, I don't think there's necessarily any like wrong way of going about it. Um, But just trying to, just trying to figure out what would make the most sense moving forward. But that's basically just what I wanted to create this episode kind of talking about, um, just letting people know, because people who I'm trying to work with, you know, I love doing the podcasting thing. I want to lean more into that. And if anything, you know, like that's my niche. I'm trying to, I'm trying to work with podcasters who are trying to make an impact in the world. Podcasters who are trying to make an impact in the world. uh, They're looking to, you know, grow their pages, grow their outreach and, you know, generate some income too. But they're not, they don't want to worry about going viral and posting constantly online and being burnt out by being on social media all the time. Um, And I don't think people have to rely on sponsorships either. You know, it's like you're, you're trying to do this podcast because it's something that you love to do and you should have the freedom to be able to speak and do the things that you want on it. And when you rely on advertisers and sponsors and things, then it, you know, begins to change the, change the field you're playing on. So for people to think like, oh, I have to have sponsors. I have to have advertisers. I have to have a large following in order to start monetizing. It's like, you don't like I've, I am. I'm a testament to that and I want to help other people do that too. So pivoting the branding of I've like done some research um, and I'm feeling pretty, pretty confident in going with uh, a rebrand of of calling this uh, basically calling what I'm doing online, this community calling it impact podcaster Academy. It's got, you know, I think impact is a very, very great word to use. It seems like a lot of people want to make more impact online, especially as, as as podcasters. Um, and then shoot, having the term podcaster in it has people know, Oh, he's talking to podcasters and, uh, it's very educational too. So Academy, it gives it that, that pristine, you know, you're learning stuff, you're growing, you're being, you know, you're, you're gaining wisdom type of thing. Cause that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm giving people the tools and the education and the stuff and the encouragement they need to have an impact an impactful podcast that's also generating them some revenue too. So it's going to be a journey. Um, you know, this past few months this year, certainly a lot's been going on already. Got a book in the works. It's almost done. Started it this month. Um, it's going to be about helping podcasters grow their podcasts using Instagram. It's going to be some great stuff. But this is very much just an update episode to keep you in the loop of everything that I've got going on. And yeah, just, you know, thank you for listening. And I look forward to just seeing where we'll be at, where, you know, you and I will be at down the road in this journey as, uh, as we continue to produce and try to provide way more value in the world than is get, being given to us. So anyway, now I'm just rambling on. But thanks so much for listening. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode, the next Impact Podcaster Academy episode.